So hi everyone, we're very honored to be here. We're team Nickel number two. My name is Olivia. I'm actually from the University of British Columbia. These are my colleagues, Lin Zhang and Yi, and they're from Nickel. All right, let's get started. So our proposal is looking at targeting glioma stem cell microenvironment and how it will improve anti-angiogenic treatment outcomes in glioblastoma multiform patients. So our aims are very simple. There are only two aims. Um, first is to reduce glioblastoma recurrence. And second is to improve on the conventional anti-angiogenic therapy. So for some background information, um, it is well known that vascular endothelial growth factor maintains the angiogenesis or the formation of new blood vessels of the tumor vasculature. And similarly, um, together with endothelial cells or EC, um, pericytes, which is a relatively understudied family of cell, they also maintain the tumor vasculature um, in the GBM. And here's a diagram or a microscopy. Uh, you can see that the parasites are staining green, uh, surrounding the cells with the nucleus staining blue. And in 2013, Chen and his colleague found that when you combine inhibition of parasites and EC, it led to effective tumor regression in vivo in mice model. Which leads up to our research question. So now we know that um, tumor recurrence is, can be attributed to glioma stem cells, and they are, they are really resistant to the conventional anti-angiogenic therapy. And we also know that after anti-angiogenic angiogenic therapy, there's an increase in pericytes coverage, um, thus decrease reduced therapeutic outcomes. So we're wondering, can a multi-method approach, which means that if we combine conventional anti-angiogenic therapy with a therapy that targets the microenvironment, um, will it reduce glioma, glioblastoma recurrence? So to determine if this multi-method approach will be effective in decreasing tumor recurrence, we will conduct a clinical trial and select patients based on the following criteria. The patient must be at least 18 years of age, must not have previously undergone any other glioblastoma treatment except for surgery, and must have a Karnofsky performance score of greater or equal to 60%. This Karnofsky performance score is a way of measuring the functional status of a patient, and it is used to measure changes in a patient's prognosis and their ability to tolerate to survive cancer treatments such as chemotherapy. So for our study design, patients will be randomly assigned into one of two control groups or one of three experimental groups. The study will be conducted in a double-blind setting where both patients and experimenters will not know which group each patient is in in order to prevent the study from being influenced by observer bias or the placebo effect. Patients in the control group will either be waitlisted or will receive chemotherapy and radiation therapy, which is currently the standard method of treatment following surgical resection of the tumor. Patients in the first experimental group will receive bevacizumab, an anti-angiogenic drug that targets vascular endothelial growth factor, along with chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Patients in the second experimental group will receive SU6668, a drug that inhibits parasite coverage, along with chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And lastly, patients in the third experimental group will receive SU6668, in addition to chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and BV. This will determine if inhibiting the role of parasites during administration of anti-VEGF agent along with the conventional therapies will increase the overall survival rate of glioblastoma patients. So for data collection, we will get the baseline level um, data prior to the treatment and we'll collect the data weekly up to uh, after treatment starts and up to 26 weeks. And some We'll, we'll collect data from some clinical review and lab, laboratory reviews, such as the urine and serum and plasma analysis. And we'll be looking at, for example, the VEGF concentration. And also, we have considered the hematological assessment, in which um, we'll probably focusing on the circulating, not, the, the, the population of the white blood cells by looking at the cell markers, such as CD45, 34. And we will also keep track of the tumor morphology using MRI imaging and looking at whether if the size of the tumor has changed or not. 
So all data will be collected and compared between experimental group and control group, and also throughout the 20 weeks of the clinical trials. And then this, this is just example graph that we will look at the percent of tumor biomarkers, and then we expect to see the combination of both drugs will give the optimal results, which is showing in the green line here. And then we also expect to see the size of the tumor will decrease from MRI imaging and also decrease from onset of the tumor recurrence and also increase in progression-free survival rate and overall survival rate. So the main purpose of our proposal is to improve the effectiveness of current anti-angiogenic therapies as glioblastoma multiform has a high rate of tumor recurrence that cannot be effectively treated by the conventional anti-angiogenic therapy. Our proposal focuses on a way to combine both conventional therapy and microenvironment targeted therapy to prevent glioma stem cells from proliferating. It seeks to target angiogenic factors as well as the tumor environment as a way to indirectly target cancer stem cells that are evolved in the resistant nature of glioblastoma and to prevent tumor recurrence, which is the main cause of the low survival rate for glioblastoma patients. The ultimate goal of our proposal is to decrease the probability of glioblastoma recurrence after tumor resection and to increase the progression-free survival and overall survival rate of these patients. As such, we believe that this will provide a novel approach to targeting cancer stem cells for the treatment of glioblastoma. Thank you.